This week it's time to strip our Dale sleeper down and see what kind of dust and exciting things it may have accumulated over the last year. Now I've done a video on this PC before as you can see and it started life as a humble Dell Dimension E520 system. However, I stripped the guts out and I modified it to run an AMD Ryzen system, as you can see here. I had several questions asking me how I achieved this. Unfortunately, when I did the conversion, I never actually recorded anything. So I thought I'd take this opportunity while I cleaned it to show you roughly what I did and where I cut and where I stuck things back in. My aim for the system was to have it near identical to an original E520, which you can see on the left. Obviously I added the grills to increase airflow, but apart from that it remains reasonably similar I feel, apart from when you get around the back. Essentially what I did was strip down the original PC case to its bare bones components and removing most of the rivets. I then obtained a removable motherboard tray from another system and went about fitting and sizing this up to fit in the space that was provided. I ended up going with mounting this sliding tray over the top of the original mounts as you can see a bit later in the video which pushes the system and the components slightly to the left, but I don't feel that it really notices that much. The power supply was completely removed from the top and relocated with a custom bracket at the bottom of the case. This whole section you can see for the power supply is a completely custom bracket, which, although I'm painted and looks a bit rough, works perfectly fine. I needed to include this bracket as it essentially provides a lot of the integral support of the computer. This is a very small form factor PSU and I still had trouble fitting it into the space but I feel it works well and if I ever bothered to paint it, it would probably look original. Upon stripping down the system, I'm pleasantly surprised by the state of it. Yes, there is a lot of dust in the front fan and the front panel, but then I would rather it collected here than anywhere else. You can see some dust accumulating on the actual CPU cooler, and this I believe is where this fan used to originally be mounted on the front rather than the back. But it cleans up reasonably well and the rest of the system is fairly clean. I had planned to go back through and make all the wiring perfectly neat and normal and workable. However, I've decided that I'm going to strip this system out and put it in a different case. The system, as you can see it now, comprises of a Ryzen 5 3600, 32GB of RAM, a GTX 1660 and two 500GB NVMe drives. It also has two hard drives running in a RAID configuration to give 1.3 terabytes of storage, which I use for video editing. Here you can see the PSU bracket I was referencing earlier, with the ground down hole to provide a level mounting for it on the left hand side bottom of the case. As mentioned, without this bracket the case is reasonably flimsy, although I did have to trim down the inside of the outer cover which you might see later.
Now here you can see where the motherboard tray has been mounted over the top of the original casing brackets. If I'd have cut all this out, it would have made this case almost like paper. A lot of the strength is made up from all the internal structures, and by cutting these away it would have been like a paper cup. If I was to do this build again, there would be several things I'd change, and this is one of the areas that I would change the most. I feel that this could be done a lot better. However, on the grand scheme of things and the time I spent on it, I feel that I did a reasonable job. Yes, I could have done better, but then life is a learning curve and you gain skills as you do these things. The pinout for this front panel header connection was a bit of trial and error, as several of the documents I found online said different things. So with the aid of a multimeter, I eventually worked out the power button, the hard drive activity light, and the power LED. I also planned to hook up the original USB and audio ports, but alas, I never got round to it. Maybe one day in the future. But for now, I hope this provides you with some inspiration to do your own sleeper builds. Everything done here was used with normal tools that you would have lying around the home. And the only way to learn something is by getting out there and doing it. Yes, you'll make mistakes, but then that's what the point is. I'm Rev Ted, this has been Revivify, and I bid you adieu.